Good morning chaps. Welcome along to the vlog today. Well, I feel I'm going to have to tidy up some of the mess that we've created over the past couple of days while we've been knuckling down to complete that wall outside. And I also want to do some casking for the red slash brown ale. And uh, we've got some Harrison's Pale in there as well. That needs to be taken out of the tanks to free up our fermenter space. Uh, because I want to brew uh, maybe next week now, it's looking more likely. And in order to do that, I'm going to have to do uh, a bit of a stock take and order some grain. I don't have any extra pail to brew any beer with. So we're going to get an order in this afternoon. So we've got all the grains that we need on site. And uh, while we're in the process of doing a stock take, and of course uh, tidying up, that means I can start to address um, our malt storage. While I'm really quite happy with it, I just think that it's about time I took everything off uh, and gave all the shelves a little bit of a wipe down. They could do with varnishing to be honest, so I might wait until uh, tomorrow or the day after to do all that and I'll take them off one by one and whack the shelving with a coat of varnish so it makes everything a little bit easier to clean. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna, I'm going to have to go through it all to fathom exactly what grains I need today. Uh, I've also been punching out a bit of a HACCP plan upstairs, just uh, keeping it fresh. I'll we'll have to do a quarterly update on that. So that kind of reminds me that I do need to keep on top of brewery hygiene. And because we've been doing a few jobs the past couple of days that have included mixing cement and that kind of stuff, it means it all gets kind of traipsed in particularly up at the top of the unit and uh, yeah we end up with this kind of stuff on the floor so I'm going to try and work to eradicate that today and get everything looking spick and span and perfectly tidy uh, I need to also cut that steel up to go into the pillars yeah actually come to think of it we've got some ballast to mix up and pour in some ballast and cement some concrete <laughs> We've got some concrete to mix up and pour into those pillars, so it would be wise to do that before we tidy up, otherwise we'll be making a mess again. So I'll get my order in for the grain. Hey Chancy Pants, he's miserable this morning for some reason. I told him off for barking at the door when the delivery man came. So yes, we're going to get the order in for the grain and then uh, maybe mix that last bit of concrete up and then we'll do the full shebang with the tidying up that seems more like a, a reasonable way of doing things I think planned out the day there there we go that will take us all day as well won't it I just know it will right I'm pretty confident that the numbers on the hops are good because when I'm using any hops, uh, the brewery management software automatically updates what we've got in stock and it removes it, of course, if indeed we have to uh, take any of these hops out of stock for a recipe. Don't know why that says niche solutions, that's wrong. Uh, but yes, so that's good. So what we're going to be checking is this lot down the bottom, which is our malt stock. As you can see, we don't have any amber malt or any brown malt, but we've got 48 kilograms of black malt. So I'm going to go through all of this list. And this, of course, goes on to a second page there. You can see that pale malt, that needs altering. We've not got minus 1,800 kilograms. Uh, because one or two of the recipes are set up for pale malt and I'm using extra pale so that's why that negative number shown up there but we can correct that on the software well this is why we're doing the stock take of course so yeah let's crack on with it um, and get it all completed but I just thought I'd show you the sheet you can pretty much see all the ingredients that we use in the uh, in the brewery pretty comprehensive list 
if you ask me. And just like that, stock take complete. As you can see, what I've done is written the corrections when it uh, brightens down. As you can see, what I've done, I've written the corrections uh, at the side of the quantities that it thinks we have in stock. And then on this far side, I've just written what I want to order. So for instance, we're going to order two flake barley. We're going to order one 25 kilogram sack of light chocolate. We're going to order two 25 kilogram sacks of Munich and so on. And because the uh, grain comes in on a pallet which weighs one ton, uh, you get 40 25 kilogram sacks on that pallet. So what I try to do is add up all of the uh, specialty malts that I'm going to require and then deduct that from the 40 and then whatever's left which happens to be 30 in this case that's how many 30 extra pale that I'll order this time round so I've already got two in stock so that'll give me 32 sacks of extra pale malt to brew with and I use around three sacks per batch so that should give us 10 brews then out of this pallet of grain. So I'm going to go upstairs and uh, give Gary a total brewing surprise. Surprise! <laughs> I'm going to give Gary a total brewing supplies a quick uh, call and we should have this on site tomorrow. They're swift like that. So I've cut some lengths of rebar and these are the bent pieces that uh, they come in six meter lengths so to get them in the van I said to Stu bend them in half uh, and then I'll just re-bend them when I need them so I've got the long bits and I've cut the long bits off because of course they're perfect for future projects so I just need to straighten out the bent sections and uh, yeah I'll pop them into the ballast or the concrete so yeah, I've got to basically straighten them out. So just using the vise down here, I should be able to just pull the bends out of this 12mm bar. Oh, it's pretty stiff. Said the actress to the bishop. Ugh. There we go, look. We've just about got it. Well, that's straight enough for the girls I go out with. Just four more to do. And uh, you might be able to hear in the background, we've got the ballast mixing into a concrete. Oh, yes. So here it is. This is the ballast mix. I keep calling it ballast, it's concrete. So what we're gonna do is put that in there. Just like so.
So I'm just a little bit short, but that's not a bad thing because I've got another mix on. So I just brought the camera across to pretty much show you in the hole. Can you see in the hole? We're about to dive, which is the shortest piece. I need to save a short piece of rebar for over there, you see. That's the shortest. So yeah, we can stick a couple of pieces of rebar in there. Right there, there we go. There's one. Oh, that's a bit deeper there. There's two. And then we'll just fill that up with the second mix when I bring it round in a second. Look at that canal. It's like a mirror finish, isn't it? Oh, it's stunning. Never gets boring, this view. Never gets boring. Ladies and gentlemen, le finished article. There we go. All of the piers are filled right up to the top. And... Haha, <laughs> I'm going off already. Chance, bugger off. I don't want you standing on my cement. So I've cemented all along the bottom edge here. And uh, hopefully this goes off before the customers arrive. Because I know what they'll do. They'll all put their initials in it. And draw penises and that kind of stuff. Because that's the kind of gang we've got in here. So, oh look, Chance has stood in it already. I knew he would. There's his little paw print, so I'll just... Go on you, shoo! I'll go and get the trowel, we'll finish that section off again. And, uh, yeah, then I've got to come into Le Bori and uh, hose everything down. I've just hosed all this section down where we've been doing the mixing. I've cleaned down there a little bit, got rid of some of the triffids that will grow in. And then, uh, just where we've had the bags of cement, just, oh, I'm gonna spray all that down. But before I do that, I'm gonna put this bar up there, I think, and uh, store it out of the way until we need it again. So with, with the concrete incomplete, at least until we order the pier caps, which is something that I've just uh, sparked in my mind again. I've not ordered them yet. Uh, then it gives me now a little bit of time this afternoon to concentrate on a couple of other jobs. Uh, one of them is to troubleshoot cold room four, conditioning room four. So it's not cooling and I've just turned the STC on. You can see him up there. and. Uh, I stood by the motorised valve which is inside at the back of the uh, the cooling fins if you like and when the STC fired it didn't open the motorised bore valve leading me to believe that potentially uh, we've got a loose connection in here so I'm going to start with the easiest check first and that is to check that we've got voltage on the 12 volt supply that actually powers that particular motorised valve. So the third easiest thing should I say, the easiest thing we can do is pop open the cover bearing in mind that all the electrics in here are live at mains voltage we'll get our multimeter out we're going to set it to DC and we're going to go in and we're going to have a look at this little beauty so that's 12 volts just there I've got zero volts, so it looks like potentially 
this little uh, power supply has failed. So let me just set it to AC. Now we'll check the terminals to see if we've got 240 volts going in. And it says we do not. Therefore, I'm going to have to find out what has happened in here. So it appears that this little fellow is the problem. So let's take this across to the bench and test it. But more than likely, it will be easier for us just to install a replacement. So, found the culprit after all. It turns out that PSU is fine. And indeed, there's the problem. We have a Lucy Lady. A little loose cable just there which we're gonna have to put back into position just like this see if that grabs him oh pops out again right I need to be investigated two-handed like because I'm uh, rounding the screw off trying to do it with the camera in my hand. There we go, dead easy fix. We've just had to bridge the problem because the screw in the terminal block was no good so I've just added that little extra bit of terminal block there and uh, she's all fixed. Right, so that cold room, stop wobbling the camera, that cold room now uh, once I've put all the box back together, should operate at optimum efficiency. So I think that is going to do for the day. I've just been in the cellar and tried to adjust some of the uh, bagging box taps. Uh, uh, because they've been leaking, it's these bloody Vigo bagging box things from Jigsaw. Right, look at this. I hate them. They're the worst connectors in the world. If somebody knows of any better ones for bagging box, let me know. But yeah, they were leaking a little bit, so I've been undone what it says here with some food lube. So hopefully that should solve the problem. See, this little bad boy here wasn't moving up and down inside its uh, <laughs> shaft. Anyway, that's a digression. As I was saying, lights are going off. You know the drill, folks. So I'm going to wrap it up, go home, edit the vlog, uh, turn all the lights off before I go, and bloody bloody blah, everything else. But other than that, guys and gals, we will see you tomorrow. I'm keen to get off, so I'm in a rush. See you tomorrow.